Welcome back, Minecraft fans, to our wonderful world of Rivenborn. We're here in episode 17, not in Mistglade, but in our nether hallway that leads to Mistglade, and it is pretty fancy. I decided to put some birch wood behind these windows. We've got ice here under the pathway here, and it allows us to very quickly get from our nether hub to Mistglade. But that's not where we're going this episode because I've got a new room in the nether hub and it's very much under construction. Up here I have broken bedrock. Check out this uh, smooth sandstone stairs by the way. That's new. I've broken bedrock so we can pop up here and get up on top and that will allow us to fly uh, this direction all the way to our desert city of sands. And I've actually already broken the bedrock above the city. So Hopefully, I'll be able to navigate by the stars. Let's find those. Yep, oh, there's the stars right there. And let's get going. And hopefully that will be good enough. All right, that worked like a dream. And as you can see, I've lit this place up so I can see it when I'm flying in. And we have a pathway all the way down to our desert city of sands. And it looks like a failed experiment where I was breaking bedrock right there. That's hilarious. But uh, while these torches got me here, uh, along with the navigating software, I would like to build something bigger. So I've brought some endstone and some glowstone to make a beacon. Uh, something that's really big and bright that I can aim for when I'm flying in. So I think I'll build it right behind here. And let me show you what I'm thinking. I'll get my scaffolding ready. Actually, let's just get some endstone and go for it. Uh, what I want to, let's get up here. What I want is somewhere right about way up here. Uh, let's go down, uh, yeah, here. I wanna start with the glowstone. So one, two, three, and I'm thinking an endstone in the middle and one, two, three, and I'll show you why I'm doing that. It's because what I want to then do is go to this and we'll have uh, end stone or glowstone just hovering in the air. This will be the beacon and we'll use these components to make sort of a tower that will be holding this. Um, I'm loving the new endstone brick wall, by the way. I want to use that primarily in this. So uh, without further ado, let's pick a spot, let's say out uh, about here and start building uh, and just start building just see what we get how about a little bit of that and then a little bit of that right we want a gentle curve maybe going up here i do want to make it a little bit fancier though so let's, let me see if i can get something that's a little bit more concrete for one of these legs and uh, show that off once it is more or less complete. Now I was thinking what's wrong with this is that it's too tall and I thought that meant that this beacon was too high but really I'm thinking that maybe the tower just doesn't need to go up to this midsection. So I'm going to have it curve back here and then just stop so we don't get any of this and I'll probably change the walls in here because it's cool that we have walls but that doesn't look very structural. So let's get rid of that. All right, well, I think that fits the bill for the shape. I like it, and it's a good height. And this uh, can just be hovering there in the middle. That's pretty magical. Uh, but as you can see, I haven't used any of these end stone brick walls that I said I was going to use. And so I'll do that now as decoration. How's that sound? Kind of like a compromise. They just weren't looking good in a structural way. So I thought I might throw them on here and there to add some, you know, sticky out bits and just more interest to the build. And yeah, and they hover. Hmm, maybe that'll be a theme since the main beacon is hovering. Maybe I'll just connect these to the stairs so that it looks like they're hovering. I like that. So where can I put them? Probably not there then. All right, I know the theme of this is hovering bits, but I think this is too much. And the ones that I think are too many are these ones here, these side bits there, and this long one. So they are going to go. But instead of the big long one at the end, I was thinking maybe 
one on top of here, and we can accomplish that. Oh, look at that. Uh, by placing a wall right here, and then blasting this out. All right, so let's get rid of these and then see how it looks. Just trim it a little bit and <laughs> miss my scaffolding, fall, and uh, get back up again. Oh, can I reach that? There we go. How's that look? All right, in one of the classic bait and switch moves of 2019, you might notice that none of these wall sections are where they were in the last clip. Yeah, I moved them all, but sometimes that's what you have to do to make it look right. And now I think it looks right. Sort of got a little magic around here, a little magic around there, and up there, and of course the beacon itself to make this look, you know, planned out like somebody knew what they were doing. So, <laughs> not me, somebody else. So I will build four of these, and then uh, hopefully they'll all fit. And then we will descend into our city and get to the real work at hand. All right, and the big reveal. I uh, changed a few things here. I didn't like the way these uh, bottom parts stuck out this way, so I made them stick out this way. And then they were just so close to each other that I joined them up. And then this whole thing looks a lot better now, I think. More like a structure though. Certainly more like a room even. I kind of wish that I'd made the entrance to our uh, portal right here. But and it's too late now, and of course I'm not going to be moving that. It's too much work. But I think this is good. And I figured out what we could do with this gap there, glowstone. So, uh, so that's it. Let's pack up and head down to our desert city. And there's a little achievement for traveling a long way in the nether. And let's see if we get that. I'm interested to find out. Oh yeah, look at that. We did. Oh. Oh, don't know where I am. Not loading the chunks, but got the advancement. That is very cool. All right, it is good to be back. So first things first is updating our previous build to 1.14. Look at that wandering trader. <laughs> uh, with uh, new blocks like cut sandstone slab, mixed in with our sandstone slab to make it look kind of like it's falling apart in some places. Uh, around over here we have smooth sandstone stairs and some llama feet, let's get out of here, and some scaffolding for little tables or workbenches or something like that, and I didn't change the whole thing to, uh, to smooth sandstone because uh, it looks alright as long as everything is sandstone or everything is smooth sandstone, you know, with a few details or at least predominantly one or the other. Like I put some cut sandstone slabs here for the balcony. And of course I added in our corn flour here. And my personal favorite over here, if you get out of the way, potted bamboo. I love how that looks. I think it really uh, fits in with the theme here. Oh, and a lantern on the corner. So over here where our southern road leads to what will be a tunnel, I've built a tower a watchtower, one of a set. And I was recording while I built it, but the, the video footage didn't come out right. So, um, so I'll just give a tour. We got some stairs up the side and I made it mostly out of smooth sandstone because of course we have access to that now with some stairs here. But I also put in some regular sandstone and cut sandstone to give it a little bit of texture and variety and experimented with throwing some stairs in here to make it look like it's fallen apart in places or that it's been through some pretty serious sieges. And of course a lantern up here guiding the way in. I put down a center post with stripped spruce, some cool acacia windows, and of course a ladder to get up to the wooden part on the top. I, I like this design a lot. I've got acacia, hey, let's see if I can, no not really, stripped acacia logs with spruce trapdoors to make sort of a structure that you can see is coming out of the sandstone. Uh, and then put some wool on top to look like canopies and connected it all with some spruce, spruce fences. Uh, and when you're up here, it really seems like that low sort of uh, watchtower where you could just peek out to maybe shoot some arrows at pillagers as they come in. But like I said, this is part of a set, and so on the other side of this wall, 
I've got room for another one, which I will build up now and then probably continue the wall this way. And then what I really want to do is connect these two towers with a bridge uh, for easy access between the two so that the guards can switch posts when they're uh, watching for invaders. Okay, let's add in that second tower. Now it needs to be different. So uh, one thing is that it'll be built on a different level. One block different, I know. Big change there. But the other thing is that the sandstone portion will be shorter and the wood portion is going to be much uh, higher, much more prominent, sort of like they had to uh, make do with the old towers and the old tower was too short. So let's start by throwing up something here. Uh, what I want to do is throw in an entrance sort of like that, but uh, way further down. So we'll have the doorway right here. We'll maybe put in a couple of sandstone. Oh, where's my smooth? Here we go. Here's the smooth stuff. Let's do that. Let's do that here. And I'll keep the cut sandstone in the corners. I think looks pretty cool. And probably above the door, just like that. And we'll do something like this. And um, let's see, we want it probably one higher. Yep, I think that'll do. So let's go like this and like this. And see that this doesn't look too bad texture wise. No, it looks all right. Uh, kind of a lot of cut sandstone here. So let me switch out some of these four sandstone blocks like that. Yeah, and it's getting darker here. And bring any lanterns though. So I'll just continue this all the way around and we'll have a base for what the sandstone portion of this will look. And I'll put in some stairs too to give it that weathered look as well. And done. Now for the fun part, we go up on top and add the wood. Let's go up here. That ought to do it. We'll start with the same format with uh, spruce fences. Let's uh, get myself boxed in here. Okay. Spruce fences and let's do acacia wood on top of those. Just uh, do all of this. Perfect. Like this and overhanging by one. So let's see if that doesn't work. We can work something else out. There we go. And this way too, of course. This will be stripped acacia. Now what I'm going to do differently on this one is add another layer worth of spruce fences and acacia logs in the same pattern except that I'm pretty sure and I haven't tested it yet but I'm pretty sure I'm going to use two uh, layers of spruce fences like this separating the acacia logs and like I said I haven't tried it so if it looks awful then we'll abandon that idea and do something else. And if we run out of spruce fences, we'll have to go sleep anyway and get some more. Let's trip it down, see how it looks. All right, well, you can see through it. Well, that won't be a problem once we get the platform up there. Um, yeah, I don't think I'll be able to tell until I really get the uh, trap doors and spruce slabs up there, but it doesn't look too bad. So let's try that and see how it looks. Looking at it again now with the platforms in place, and I even added a small platform on this first layer that you could get off at and actually station a guard if you wanted. And it's actually a little bit more protected. So maybe this is the guard's favorite spot to watch, but uh, it definitely works. I like it a lot. And so we've got kind of a variation on our original tower and all I need to do is put this tent on. It's going to be blue and green, same as that one. Uh, and then put these supporting posts and then see about constructing a bridge between the two. And I think that will just finish it off. Uh, also extend the wall onto this side because it's not much of a wall that only blocks this much, this portion. So we'll send some more this way. And, uh, and that'll be the watchtower 
for this sort of southern uh, southern path into the city. And just like that, it's all done. I even put in a bit of lighting, which I should have done over there. Uh, but we do still have detailing still to come. So I will get that done. And believe me, a lot of these places are going to need some, some details. All right, now what is in a real effort to make, to not do too much, I've given this one acacia buttons and this one sandstone walls. And that way, neither one of them has acacia buttons and walls and lanterns and too many doohickeys and too much detail. Uh, it's consistent. It wraps around. They each have their own sort of style, tall and elegant, short and squat. And I think it looks much more like it was designed by a real person that way. And now for what promises to be the best part of this little build, using unlit campfires to make a rope bridge. Let's see if I can get this to work. It's important that they all be facing a certain way. Also, thanks to Green for this trick from his 1.14 tips and trick video. A lot of inspiring ideas there. And but this was the best by far. There we go, that looks so cool. I love it. And to think that they're campfires, I mean, it just looks just like a, a plank bridge across there. It is so cool to be up in this watchtower and be able to look over all that will become of our city of sands and to look into the future and protect the city from raids. I still have a bit more of this wall to finish over on that side, but you'll have to look for that in the next episode because that's all I've got time for. Let's see if I can get the sunset in here. Thanks for watching, and I hope I see you in the next episode here in our very own world of Ribbon Bowling.